What do we have going on here? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. This video is a little bit of an arts and crafts project. On this channel, we've been talking a lot about the systems in the new building, but this video is all about an upgrade that we're doing to one of the existing systems next door at the greenhouse. This system here at the greenhouse is called Set 5. It was the one, two, three, four, fifth system to get put in. I know it's genius naming here. It is roughly a thousand gallons in size. The top two tanks are 240 gallon tanks. They measure eight feet by four feet by about 12 inches tall. Over the years, they've been used for any number of different types of corals. We shoot our live shows in these tanks but we want to retool them slightly. Several years ago, we were messing around with some really inexpensive T5 lights that we picked up from Amazon. These lights at the time were about $100. I think that they're right around $130 at the time of this recording. Still a very good deal just for the fixture. They come with bulbs, but you'll really want to replace those bulbs. They look very yellow. And we've replaced them with a combination of ATI Blue Plus and ATI Aqua Blue Special. You can see here that they've kind of had a little bit of wear and tear over the years. We don't really even wipe them down very much. So the greenhouse, the humidity, the salt, the dripping and everything like that that goes on, it really does a number on fixtures like this. Having said that, most of them are still pretty much in working order. The reason that we want to completely redo this system of lighting is that we want to be doing larger scale flash sales and things of that sort. We're going to be experimenting with shooting top down. Now you see here that the lights are very low to the water and it's kind of difficult to maneuver in there with a the camera and lean out over the water. We want the lights higher. And also we would like the lights to be a lot more consistent because believe it or not, we have gone easily four plus years without changing the bulbs. Needless to say, it's a little bit dim after all this time. Also, the way that we've hung these lights is essentially getting some fence doors and mounting them above the space. At the time, it was pretty clever because you could throw all your power supplies up there. You could throw your power strips up there. It was just kind of like a convenience thing. And the way that we had them strung up, we used this like aluminum wire, not exactly perfect. Just because we had to use the existing framework of the greenhouse to make do. So there's like this bird's nest of aluminum wiring going up there. It's kind of an eyesore. Now that we have the opportunity to do everything right from the very beginning, we planned pretty heavily and went with much more streamlined hanging kits, things of that sort. So we'll get into all of that. Also, I have to point out that most of the stuff that I'm talking about, we will have affiliate links in the description below. So if you're looking for any of these things to incorporate into your setup, by all means, please check out those links. I think they'll really help you out. The new hanging canopy we've made from a combination of wood and also ABS. The wood is essentially the frame, and we got a 4x8 sheet of ABS to sit on top. And that's pretty necessary out in the greenhouse because there's a lot of little drips and things like that that happen, especially in the wintertime when there's a lot of condensation. You can imagine that the structure itself being so cold and hitting that humid air immediately causes condensation. So at different times, there's going to be drips. There's going to be like rivers of water coming down the different galvanized steel structures. We kind of have to plan in advance to kind of manage all those little drips and spills and stuff like that. So having an ABS top allows all that water just to run off and not hit our new lights. 
the lighting is going to hang down from those two by four sections. And that two by six, that additional two inches, is going to allow us to install a pretty long trip light power strip. We found these really nice 72 inch ones that have a total of like 24 outlets. And we're gonna be installing one on each side just for really easy access to power wherever we need it. I'm pretty psycho when it comes to cable management. It doesn't look it from how the greenhouse used to be. But whenever possible now, I'm really trying to clean up any kind of wiring mess whenever I can. So here, the guys are installing all of the mounting hardware for the power supplies, as well as some cable management J-channels, things of that sort. J-channels have been like the big revelation in this whole building. I absolutely love the stuff. We use it as much as humanly possible. It's very convenient to install because it has like an adhesive back. Originally, I was even screwing them in in addition to the adhesive back, but the adhesive is very strong, it turns out. So if you choose to not use any kind of additional screws or anything like that, it'll be just fine. The 72 inch trip lights, they come with their own hanging brackets, but they're kind of... Mm, a little chintzy because if you were to pull really hard on a plug, it's going to come off of that little wall mount. So Ben has a 3D printer at home and he printed out these little blue mounting brackets. So we have that little extra bit of security there. The stuff that I am most pleased with is the actual hanging hardware that we went with in the greenhouse. Let's start at the very top. Our plumbers had turned us on to using Unistrut. We've used a combination of stainless steel and galvanized Unistrut at different parts of this whole big project. But the greenhouse really doesn't need stainless because the whole thing is really made out of galvanized. We don't really have too many issues with that. So just to save a little bit of money, we went with the galvanized Unistrut over stainless. We did find a really helpful three-axis laser to basically line up the Unistrut up top with the tank. I don't know why, but I have this brand loyalty thing with DeWalt. And the DeWalt laser is nearly $500, and I didn't think that it was going to be something that I would use all the time because I'm not a carpenter or anything like that. And I happened to find a much less expensive knockoff which was I think in the ballpark of like $150. And it had really, really good reviews. I'm like, sure, let's go for it. Because also, the DeWalt one uses 12 volt batteries. It doesn't really interface well with the rest of my 20 volt or 60 volt devices. Since I wasn't really benefiting from battery system anyway, I decided just to get this knockoff. I've used it so much more than I was expecting. It's helped out monumentally when lining up the Unistrut up at the ceiling with these tanks. To install anything into Unistrut, you need what are called channel nuts. I found some 3 8 16 channel nuts, as well as some stainless 3 8 16 eye bolts. These things screw right into that channel nut, and it sits snugly into the Unistrut. Further hanging down from that, we wanted to use like a very strong stainless steel wiring. I don't remember the gauge of the wiring that we used, but I think it could hold like a thousand pounds or something insane like that. Clearly overkill, but why not? It's not really that much more expensive than any other that we saw. It came as a part of a kit, and that came with the little crimping sleeves, the railing, thimbles, things like that. Now, we didn't have any kind of tooling to, to work with this stuff, so I purchased a 17-inch rope crimping tool as well as a steel wire cutter, and those two things made it a total breeze to start installing that stuff down. One big thing that I really wanted to have is the ability to do all the different types of micro-adjustments when it came time to like level the entire canopy, if I needed to, to slide stuff over, Again, the Unistrut helped with that. I was able to find these stainless steel turnbuckle adjustable wire tensioners, and those have been a total lifesaver because they are able to micro-adjust 
about three inches of height, roughly, maybe even more. Any time that we needed to make any type of modification or tightening anything up, they've been absolutely perfect. And lastly, the hardware to connect to the top of our wood frame, we found some stainless steel eye plates. And that is pretty much the big shopping list. As I mentioned before, literally everything that I just described, I purchased on Amazon. All those affiliate links are in the description below. The lights that we decided to go with over this set of tanks are Ecotech XR15 Blues. There are a total of 30 of them over these tanks, meaning 15 per tank. We went with this over the 30s because we were able to get the best combination of spread with these. And this is my first time messing with the Gen 5 Blues. They have a couple of extra color channels. They have a cyan channel now, as well as a lime channel. We're probably not going to be going very heavy into those two colors, but otherwise, we're pretty happy with how these lights look. One of my favorite things about Radeons is the hanging hardware. It's very well thought out, and it made it an absolute breeze to install over top of a tank like this. Because what we're able to do is pre-drill the section that goes into the wood. And when it comes time to mount the light, you really just have to like screw that little guy in, draw the, the metal string up, and you're basically done. That saved us from any kind of hassle of trying to mount all the lights first, and then lift that entire heavy canopy up. We didn't have to do any of that stuff. We could do each row of lights at a time. Similarly, it's easy to remove those because it's just two screws. You can take the entire row down. And the way that we did the power management, all the connections are directly above each of the lights. So it's a quick disconnect. Hopefully we don't have to mess with the lights, but if ever we did, if ever one of them just fries itself or whatever, it'll be a very simple replacement. So you might be wondering, why don't we go back with just regular T5s rather than LED? Because I still love T5. For this particular tank though, LEDs are a little bit important because we want to be able to grow different corals under different light and then quickly change the light for photography. Believe it or not, we tend to shoot photos under much more daylight coloration than we grow the corals. Most of the time, our tanks look very blue, but then when it comes time to like shoot the live show or a flash sale or something like that, Becca cranks up the whites because that's just a lot more, I guess, image sensor friendly on our cameras. So being able to quickly change color temperature like that is a very nice thing that LEDs provide. As I mentioned before, these systems are going to eventually be used to house a lot of our racks for the flash sales and things of that sort. So we're in the process of doing some major cleanings. That's why the one tank looks completely empty. We want to be able to completely drain that guy, scrub it out, and have a fresh start. It is tied in with the rest of the system, but just being able to completely drain a tank, vinegar it, it's a nice deep clean. All right, and this is the finished product. Those canopies are up. We did all the leveling that we needed to do. We updated the firmware. Yeah. This system is pretty much ready to go. What I really like is how high the lights sit above the water. There's practically zero risk of any splashing that's going to damage the lights. The top of it, again, is ABS plastic so that any kind of drips or anything like that will run off the sides. There's very low likelihood of water damage happening to these lights. The other thing is having them that high off, it makes it that much easier for Becca to get in there with the camera and shoot top down into the tank. There isn't too much of a risk of her hitting her head or anything like that. Whereas before it was pretty much impossible with the T5s sitting so close to the water. We did do a quick par test and even at this height, we were able to get roughly 450 at the top of the water and about 390-ish at the bottom of the tank because it's such a shallow tank. The spread is remarkably even. Between the lights, there really isn't a drop-off. If anything, it's dropping down maybe like 10 to 15 par. It's essentially just a blanket of light. 
For this particular build, we decided to not go with the diffuser kits. No real big thoughts about that. We just wanted to try these fixtures without it. And I figured with the height that we're working with, it wouldn't have made as much of a difference. Now the light does get into our eyes a little bit, so the diffuser kits might have helped for that. But again, it's not that that big a deal because it is quite high and you have to essentially look up at the lights for that to be an issue. All right, that pretty much does it for this update. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm super pleased with how this turned out. Coming from what it was to what it is now, it looks like there's a spaceship floating above this tank. It's super clean. There's a minimum number of wires hanging down from the greenhouse to, to hold this all up. The wiring is nicely tucked away and everything is easily accessible for future maintenance. All right, guys, until next time, happy reefing.